when Virgin and Delta walk into a room, you would swear that two companies that are equal size and stature. Delta Airlines has over a thousand aircraft. How many aircraft do you think Virgin has? Thirty-eight. All right. When I say that, people are often surprised. But what does Virgin have that other airlines don't have? We have a story. We have a story. And therefore, when you look at a small airline like Virgin with thirty-eight aircraft, we actually have a very big story. And we communicate that story very loudly through our, our founder. Who is a champion storyteller? So, when you look at a good story and we think about how we've communicated ideas, this is just actually some activities we did in Barbie, that's with one of our cabin crew. And, and if you look at especially love that little girl in the middle, because when, you, when you're telling a good story, you see it in the audience. And you capture that message in a very powerful way. The challenge is that your message has to somehow get inside there. <laughs> And when we look at the workplace, what we have an additional challenge is that our workplace very often doesn't have one type of personality of the movie. That's a typical workplace. We have all sorts of different types of personalities. And what I wanted to do today is share a little bit of research done by, um, by Dave Logan and his team in his book, Tribal Leadership. And what he's done is he's tried to just really categorize tribes within the workplace so we can understand how to tell a story and how they communicate something. And I can have an impact on what you understand from my words based on how I prime you. So for example, if I show you that picture, yeah? Then I show you that. What's that spell? So, what if I showed you that first? And then I showed you the exact same picture. So I can prime what I want you to see from the words that I use based on some sort of emotion before I actually show you those words. And you can understand that in communicating internally, the power of priming. Priming someone around a message gets to determine what that message is. I'm going to show you another little picture about framing. Now, just a little quick question here, which circle is bigger? I know you'll see the same test you say he wouldn't show us if one was actually bigger, right? <laughs> but I'm going to show you this instead. What do you feel about that image? What's the feeling that goes through your mind when you see that image? How many of you think that's a positive image? How many of you think it's a negative image? But I can change the frame of how you see that image based on how I, what part of that image I choose to show you. If I show you this, you get a story, right? Same image. I can show you a story of the story that I want you to see from this image that I have. If I change that and I show you this, Lastly, what's the experience that we got out of the situation? 
So as you think about this acronym SHARE, what you're going to be thinking about is very simple. What's the situation? What's the hindrance? What's the action that's required or that we took? What was the result? What's the as we talk about communication, I really want to share that, that being able to package your, your theory or your message in a story is going to be one of the most powerful things that you can do. Yeah? I have a second, but a third book actually called, called Raise Your Bar. And the reason why I brought this up is because one of the challenges that I've had in sales and tracking sales is very often we use Excel to track performance and to track, to track numbers and rows and columns. And, and, and in my impression, that wasn't good enough. So you know that the story is the most important thing. How you connect with a story, how you start with a story, how you, how you communicate a story, is, is, is going to be a fundamental part of how you perform your message.